so what happened is uh, an individual, an individual um, who um, I was taking to court um, wanted to get some type of, uh, I don't even want to say revenge, just want to strike at me, you know, just wanted to try and make my life uh, more difficult um, just because. And so um, during the court process, um, randomly, the person says, um, is is it is this a good time to um, say that uh, I think that um, he's he's dangerous and um, and might try and harm me? That's all it took. Um, the judge said, "Well, if you feel that way, go fill out the paperwork and turn it in." So that person went to go fill out the paperwork to turn it in. And that's all it took. Like, it didn't take, uh, you know, for me to go uh, in front of the judge for this to be a thing. It, it doesn't matter. If somebody says, hey, that person shouldn't have guns, that's it. And now you have to fight. Right. But it takes time. I got lucky because my final hearing for this situation was already in place. Um, and it had been um, it had been retracted to a a, a, uh, a much sooner date instead of December. It was going to happen within three weeks. So I got lucky in several places here. Um, so anyway, so for those three weeks, I couldn't have guns in my house. If the police would have came to my house, uh, and I had guns, you know, um, bad news. So when that, uh, date came up, the final trial date or whatever, um, I went there and I had to plead my case and the judge was not pro second amendment um you can tell that the judge didn't know much about firearms at all period and uh just based on the questions she would ask you know um so one of the things that was said in the paperwork is that i was seen pointing my gun at the wall while my daughter was with me. So I flipped that around on him um, and told him what was really going on. And so I said, so judge, what you read um, that I was pointing a gun at the wall um, that's what I'm supposed to do. What I'm supposed to do when I'm clearing my weapon is to point the gun in a direction where there's no people, there's nothing that I'm not willing to destroy. And I wasn't pointing directly at a wall, I was pointing down towards the ground, more say down towards the ground wall corner area basically. And I pointed the gun in that direction as I cleared my weapon to go put it up. So she then asked, well, isn't there a safer way to do this so that it's not done by your daughter? And I said, well, it wasn't done near my daughter. It was done in my room, but my daughter happened to come to my, my bedroom door to ask me a question. And uh, she just seen me clearing the gun. Um, now, realistically, 
my daughter doesn't look at guns the way even the judge and everybody else does. She looks at them the way I do, how I grew up. I grew up, at, my whole family has guns. Guns are not a some evil mechanism. Um, I, I, I grew up where I, I'm, I wasn't afraid of guns. I respected them. I respect, I knew what they did. Um, but it's just a gun, you know, it's, it's just a tool. Um, and so that's how I grew up. So she grows up the same way. She's not afraid of firearms. She doesn't look at them that way. She knows actually how to handle it. But even outside of that, she knows not to touch a firearm, period, at all whatsoever. Um, and so um, she sees guns like, you know, it's not, a, it's not, it doesn't, that doesn't, mean anything to her she sees a gun and does like you know people who who are not aware uh, almost think as if if the child sees the gun they're going to be traumatized or something right you know so anyway um i explained that to her and that i was doing um what's in the and i actually printed out um the firearm safety rules and gave that to the judge as I gave my case. And uh, so I'm like, yeah, I did what the safety rules say to do, clear my weapon, and I put it up. So she asked, well, um, couldn't you just leave it in the car until she went to sleep and then come in the house and clear it? And <laughs> I had to catch myself because it didn't make any sense and I could have messed myself up by my body language or my facial expression you know um, and so I had to catch myself and not make an expression that said it doesn't make any sense what are you talking about you know what I mean so I, I had to and she goes, can't you just leave it in the car until, and I was like, I could, but it's the same thing, you know, and I was able to make sure my face didn't say you're stupid or anything like that. Um, and so I'm like, you know, regardless, it's the same thing, whether she's sleep or woke, you guys is uh, like, claim or, or your fear of what could happen, right? The accidents do happen thing. It doesn't matter if she's sleep or woke based on what you're concerned about, the bullet ricocheting or something crazy like that. Whether she's sleep or woke, the, the bullet would still do the same thing. Now, I explain, you know, that, you know, I'm, I, I've trained over 7,000, uh, I've taught firearm safety to over 7,000 people. Um, I worked as a range safety officer for uh, over five years. I explained all these things to her. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, not everybody's going to be able to say stuff like that, right? You know, not everybody's going to be able to say, I've done this and done that to give themselves more credit, you know? So again, I got lucky in so many ways. Um, and so anyway, um, wrapping it up, uh, you know, I, 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 I said that part to her, like, you know, it, 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 it it's the same thing, regardless whether I, if I were to leave it in the car or bring it in, it, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's the same thing. Uh, I just, I'm safe. The guns pointed in a safe direction. Uh, the caliber that I have, the bullet, it's never been, uh, there's never been a case of a bullet doing the type of ricocheting you guys are talking about. Um, and so, you know, it, it's, it's all good. I'm following the rules is the whole handle, you know, and I'm like back to the, the firearm safety rules. I'm following the firearm safety rules. And she's like, okay, this is she. This is exactly what she did. She goes, okay, but, hmm. 
All right, fair enough. That's exactly what she did. Like she thought she was going to say something else. And then she thought about it, realized that what she was about to say wasn't going to make any sense. And then she's like, he's right. You know, and she's like, all right. And so at the end of the the whole uh, court thing, that uh, um, restriction was removed uh, immediately uh, to get my guns back. Um, and, uh, the other two things that I went to court for in the first place, I, I got that too. So, um, it was a big win for me and my family. And, uh, that was, that was what happened. Um, it, it just sucks that somebody, anybody can just go, Hey, that person right there, uh, is unsafe or that person is this or that. And they don't have to prove anything, nothing. They just say it, right? So potentially I can, I can say that the governor of Washington, the, the, the mayor of Seattle is a danger and shouldn't have any firearms. And I don't even know this person like that. I just, I just seen him once and felt whatever all you gotta do is just say it and fill out the paperwork and I, it's not that i have to prove anything all i gotta do is fill out the paperwork you're guilty until proven innocent that is wrong so that's 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 what happened